Hi, this is Marty Stepniak, staff writer for Hospitals and Health Networks. Healthcare systems around the country are aiming to move into a value-based model of care that keeps patients healthy and out of the hospital, all while still surviving in a fee-for-service world that still pays the bills. Some have struggled to navigate this new world of medicine without going over a cliff, uh, while others, such as Heritage Medical Systems in Northridge, California, have begun to chart a course toward the, this different model of providing care. Today I'm joined by James May, Chief Innovation Officer of Heritage. Jim, thanks for being with me today. Thanks. It's a privilege to be here. Could you just start by telling me a little about Heritage and just the conversations going on within the organization sure. that got you toward developing this roadmap? Well, it's, it's a really interesting time for me in my career. I've uh, spent 30-some uh, years in more traditional integrated delivery uh, networks uh, across the country, uh, uh, previously with Catholic Health Partners out of Ohio. And I've joined uh, Heritage Medical, which is a really great company. They've been fully managing care in uh, California and Arizona, New York, for almost 35 years. It was started by a physician, Richard Merkin, and it's really a holistic model of taking care of the patient in a full risk uh, situation. What are the uh, unique characteristics of, of your market and its stakeholders that you had to factor in when devising this roadmap toward value-based care? Yeah. Heritage is really known for uh, taking uh, care of that patient holistically and really they're fully responsible for all aspects of it. So the patient is at the center and they surround that with a primary care network and uh, appropriate specialists and other uh, other entities that are necessary to take care of that patient. But the really um, cool thing about that is that it's all about the patient and making sure you have the right things for the patient at the right uh, location. So a lot of unnecessary hospitalizations uh, are avoided and that care is given more on an ambulatory basis. So it's really been a system that's really focused holistically on that patient and not driven by a hospital, but driven about what's right for the patient. That's really, I think, Dr. Merkin's genius of this over the years. Jim, how were you able to uh, gain the buy-in of, of internal teams within your organization who may have been reluctant to move to this new way of... I think, uh, you know, we're involved in a big joint venture with Trinity Health um, in out of Detroit, and we're really trying to bring the heritage model uh, into some of the Trinity markets. And it's been well received in the notion that uh, when we talk to caregivers, physicians, nurses, other entities, it's, a be it's always about that patient getting them just what they need and getting them the best uh, level of care uh, to make their outcomes as positive as possible. So it's been easy to get buy-in because people are all, in, you know, they're really engaged in that. They like it. What sort of changes did you have to make with your leadership within your organization to be able to... Um gain the attention, the, the influence of payers within your markets? I think the leaders that excel in this are really focused on the outcomes. Uh, they're focused on making sure that the work they do lends the patient the best possible um, care uh, that, they could, that they could get. And so we're looking for people that have urgency, that want to get things done today. We don't want to do the Mrs. Jones's hip in two days. We want to do it right away. We want to make sure if, if uh, she needs antibiotics, they happen tonight, not in two days. If the, she needs to be seen in the clinic, it happens today, not in five days. And so that urgency, that focus on getting the patient what they need, where they need it, uh, when they need it, I think is really a key uh, ingredient to this whole um, mechanism that makes for great patient care, four and a half, five star kind of patient care across all the markets that we serve. So it, I, I, I find it refreshing just how focused it is and urgent it is on getting that care the right place at the right time. Are there any pitfalls or, or things to watch out for that you would tell hospital leaders to, to, to be cognizant of if when devising their plan toward value? The cultural aspects of this are extremely challenging. You're taking people from a very hospital-centric organization, which is they've been given their heart and soul to that. There's nothing wrong with that. But going to this more uh, focused on the uh, entire uh, continuum of care, getting the patient to the right level of care, sometimes there are cultural aspects of that that are big change. And so I really think that people have to focus on that as much as the mechanics of how you do it. It's the culture of surrounding that that really is important as well.
Just in closing, Jim, any, any words of advice you would offer to other hospital leaders who are just getting started on this journey uh, toward value-based care? Be focused, uh, be very intentional, uh, bring an urgency to it, recognize the cultural aspects will be dominant in what you're doing and help people through that. Make sure you have the right skill sets uh, so kind of the normal blocking and tackling, but you have to do it and you have to tile those things together. Thanks so much for being with me today, Jim. Thank you. For HNHN, this has been Marty Stepniak. Thanks for watching.